Boo! Ah, 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 ah. Yes, hello, and welcome to another fourth Doctor review, yes. Today I'll be looking at the Alan Barnes story, The Gallery of Ghouls. Woo, spooky. Yes, today I'll be looking at the fourth Doctor adventure, The Gallery of Ghouls. Now, if you know me, I wasn't really looking forward to this release because of a simple fact it's by Alan Barnes and the last fourth Doctor story he wrote was Suburban Hell and I'm gonna put it this way this is one of my least favorite big finish releases out of their whole catalogue so I was very skeptical about this release so we see whether I am right or was I wrong so without further ado let's look how this story is so presented. Thick. Overall we have some cogs there we have the fourth Doctor we have Madame Tissot and Romana and Ghoul there and then we have the fourth Doctor banner there then we have the spine side the booklet we have advertising for the next instalment in the fourth Doctor saga which is Trouble with Drax which is a story I, I'm really looking forward to I've got it but I haven't got around to listening to it and I really do like Drax and obviously it's been recast by uh, Ray Brooke it'll be interesting to see his portrayal of Drax we have advertising for Doctor Who magazine and production credit and of course we have the reversible cover and the discard is exactly the same as the cover Gallery of Ghouls eh? What do I think then? I take back everything I said about this story. Alan Barnes has proved me wrong. This story is certainly a massive step up from Suburban Hell, um, which was very popular when it was released, but uh, for me, I just found it annoying with nothing really happening. Anyway, I'm just I'm sure I'll talk about Suburban Hell in more detail um, when I get to the fourth Doctor Overview in Series 4, which hopefully will be out like, in August. I hopefully want to finish that series by the time Series 5 concludes. Um, but to me, Gallery of Ghouls reaches out to me on so many levels, such as the setting of Victorian times. Um, with uh, me being a fan of, you know, uh, big finishers Sherlock Holmes and Jago and Lightfoot, I fell in love with Barnes's world building uh, because it creates some nice gothic imagery uh, with something lurking in the shadows. Now, going back to that Jago and Lightfoot point, this story I could easily see the Infernal Investigator slot in because this story does have a balance of humour and mystery, what really does keep you hooked. I mean, part one is my favourite part because it has a, it's a lot of fun with a nice gothic edge what contains some eerie music, what just adds to the atmosphere. Part two, however, is when the story starts to show some cracks as the story goes full season 17 with the whole wackiness, with the solution being disappointing and then sudden, you know, rather sudden, and then something else happens, which, to me, just comes across filler with Alan Barnes trying to reach the hour mark. Now people have said Celia Imrie steals the show. To an extent I agree with that, but to me, Tom Baker just steals it for me. So onto characters, the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. Because Alan Barnes has captured Tom's wacky humour, that means Tom fits into this perfect uh, fits into this story perfectly, uh, with the story beginning to hint at the Black Guardian returning because obviously in series 5 the finale is the Black Guardian so I think he's the main villain alongside Cuff but obviously we can't really judge it yet because it's not out yet um, but I'm quite looking forward to that because I really did like Cuff but in the series 2 finale and Sands of Life and all that um, and obviously with the hinting at the Black Guardian sort of return the fourth Doctor gets a bit paranoid with thinking you know seagulls could be his agents um, and you know he thinks deck chairs are invented by the Black Guardian just all round, Tom Baker is a ball of energy with witty name drops and his amusing death speech. To me, Tom easily steals the limelight in part one. I mean, I'll get on to Celia Imri in a minute, but to me, Tom just shines for all the scenes he's in because he just has this great twinkling performance which just shines throughout the story. Romana, played by Lala Ward. She's very much in the detective role, uh, with her hunting ghoul down and investigating all these goings on, which leads to her very much wanting to do her own thing. Um, in moments we see, you know, moments like that, we see how strong her character is, which I really do like, um, because I think that when we get Romana in the TV series, she's very different to what she is uh, within Big Finish, for obvious reasons, because Big Finish just expand on characters and just makes them more rounded characters, and I think Romana in this series has really shined through especially in the Jonathan Morris two part in this story is no exception and Lala just ex executes this perfectly within this story uh, Madame Tissot played by Celia Imri like I said before Celia Imri does shine uh, in part two 
uh, because the simple factor is I think her character is given more to do as we see her working alongside the Doctor which leads to some funny moments what you hear in the trailer um, and her character herself is quite headstrong, snotty, show off um, but going back to part two we get some character expansion uh, with her past coming to haunt her along with an interesting character reveal if you've seen the episode of Bad Education with the American teacher then you sort of might know what the reveal is. So what is. are my overall thoughts on the Gallery of Ghouls? I think that this is a great fun quirky adventure with Ghoul, the villain of the story being very unique, what just really does suit the wackiness of this story from having this slight bumblingness to him but he does get some great moments when he sort of starts to torment the Doctor um, the cast, I've got to say, are just on fine form. You know, everyone gives a strong performance um, within this story. Uh, the sound design really does enhance the fear factor at what times. Was building perfectly in part one. Part two, to me, just loses everything Alan Barnes built up and it took it down in a different direction, which I wasn't really a fan of. Uh, but I guess you could take uh, that as the season 17's sort of wackiness. Uh, so, what would I rate this story? Now, I do love Alan Barnes' Jago and Lightfoot story, and this story does have that sort of vibe. I mean, when I finished part one, I thought this story could be a 10 out of 10. But then part two came along, and it sort of crushed my ratings, it made the story sort of diminish. And my overall rating for this story is an 8.5 out of 10. Still a very good release. Um, I mean, if the story kept with its sort of part one roots, then yeah, this story would have been a 10 out of 10 or maybe a 9. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this. Definitely an improvement on this uh, abomination of a story. Uh, so that concludes this review. Hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Uh, please give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, it really does help the channel out. And my next review will be of either Paradise Towers yeah, that's going to be fun, isn't it? Because that's a story I absolutely um, adore. <laughs> I hate it with a passion. Uh, so that's going to be great, seeing me rip that to shreds. Or it will be a review of the first Doctor Companion Chronicle set. So it will be one of those two, depending which I manage to get around editing first. So without further ado, that's all I've got to say. So please give it a like if you enjoyed this video. And subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you very much and bye-bye.